Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, they're saying we're in a drought again. And as you can see, there's nothing happening moisture-wise up there. Trade winds barely moving, pretty warm, about 82 degrees here today. And those clouds are not moving very fast, and they're dry. And can you hear me now? <laughs> hey, I've had some technical difficulties the past couple of weeks, which has slowed down my being able to publish on YouTube. I think I've remedied that, and this will be the first video since all that happened. I had a lot of videos I was trying to get up on there. They wouldn't take all kinds of audio and uh, problems. Anyway, uh, I think I've got that resolved. It's good to be back, you guys. Uh, I will catch up on all your comments, which I wasn't able to do because I had devices down. And it almost made me sit down and write a long letter. <laughs> Remember when we used to do that to communicate? I sure do. This is easier, though. Okay, and so once again, we find ourselves in drought conditions. It's all in the news out here. Uh, the ground out here is not crunchy right at the moment. But I have been visiting some people in lower elevations. I'm at about uh, 11, 1200 feet here, maybe a little over 1100 feet. And I've been down by sea level, pretty dry down there. Ground was crunchy, brown. I'm doing okay here, catching plenty of water still. Uh, not overflowing in all containers, but in pretty decent shape, I'll say. Yeah. But yeah. We could use some rain for sure. Always an issue. Uh, didn't used to be in years past. Used to, used to get down on your knees and pray it would stop raining, but it's the opposite now. And those of you that are familiar with this channel and how I live out here off grid 100% in Hawaii on the big island, uh, we rely on rain for all household use. There is no piped-in water out here. It's what you catch and hang on to. And then uh, hopefully you're fairly conservative about your usage because you don't want to have to pay for water delivery out here. Every raindrop counts. Every raindrop counts. And as dry as it is, of course, uh, these are perfect solar catching conditions. And for those of you that might be new to the channel, I'm going to do just a real quick few minutes about how I live off grid, supply my own power, catch my own water. No utilities out here. And while that sky above me is beautiful today, uh, that's unusual for out here. No moisture in those clouds whatsoever. But I've got plenty of water at the moment, so life is good. And so for my power, right? The sun's out there right now beating on these solar panels. That's it. This is my power plant right here. Here's a smaller power plant going just fine. Need to trim a couple of weeds, get some of those shadows off of there. Like that one right there. Don't like seeing shadows on my solar panels whatsoever. But anyway, another little power plant right there. And while the sun's beating down on those solar panels, the cables from them come right in here, tie into the brains of a solar system, and this is a charge controller. Here's another example, same thing. The cables from the solar panels come right in here, plug in, and they regulate the power going into your gas tank. Your gas tank being a battery. A quick look at my gas gauge, I can see it is 95.9% .9 full. So yeah, these are the brains of your system. And then you've got your battery, your gas tank, the power off the solar panels, 12 volt. Goes into your battery and then up to what you invert it to, convert it from 12 volt to regular household AC to run all of your appliances. So you need an inverter, right? So no power company, no electric bill, 
just the sunshine and a few pieces of equipment. So sun comes down, beats on your panels, your power plant pushes power into the brains of your system, the charge controller. From there into your batteries and you store power so at night you have everything running that you need to be running, right? So you just want to make sure that you've got a big enough power plant, the accordingly sized brains to your system, and a big enough fuel tank to run whatever you need to be running day and night. That's it. Everything out here runs on the sun. Everything. From the refrigerator, to grills, to blenders, to coffee makers, to water purification systems, to this little camera that I'm talking to you guys over. Everything. Just like if you were in town on the grid, everything you run has to be plugged in. It's the same thing out here. Everything out here is plugged in. Same thing. Same power. Same devices. You get the idea, right? All your power tools. The list goes on and on. It's just the same way that you live anywhere. Instead of having the utility company feed it to you, you are your own utility company. And you will learn the longer you live off grid, like where you might need to make an adjustment. If you're running out of power, it's not the worst thing. It tells you, am I generating enough power? Do I have enough stored power? These are the things that will become second nature the longer you use solar. Start off with a small system. Give it a try. See what you can run. And then make adjustments along the way. I didn't have this much solar 30 years ago because I wasn't running this much stuff. I catch the precious rain from the sky. I feed it off of the roof into holding tanks. I save that water. I can pump that water using the power from the sun. Deliver it right through everything that I possibly need. It's just not that complicated. My solar equipment supplier from 30 years ago, you know, I would go in and talk to him and I had so many questions and he'd say, did you wake up with power in the morning? And I would say, yes. And he said, well, then you're doing okay. Don't overthink it. But now all these years later, I've, I've overthunked it some. And uh, that's why I have some backups just in case, you know, it can be dark for weeks out here. Super dark. I mean, like almost zero solar catch, but you know, I've got all my little spare gas tanks, batteries topped off. Gives me some range, long range. You know, most days I replace what I've used overnight and then some. But not always. So you can learn to just adjust to the conditions you're living under. And you will. The more you get used to it. Yeah. And it's the same thing about water, right? come into a drought, you know, maybe I won't bathe as often. <laughs> I say that jokingly, but no, I never waste, never waste water out here as a rule anyway, because my, my tank is only so big. I have the ability to have about 6,000 gallons of water on site. I know how long that can last if I never saw another raindrop. So, I mean, that's kind of the thinking, but I've never gone six months without a raindrop out here, which is probably what I could make that last if I had to. But under normal conditions, you know, there's surplus water too. Yeah, it hasn't really been fantastic lately, but uh, that could change tomorrow and I could be overflowing again. 
I'm pretty well topped off. I think I've got about five, maybe a little over 5,000 gallons right now. I, and if that started to not be enough and the times really stayed drought persistent, uh, you know, I'd have to get a bigger tank. That's about the remedy to where then I could catch 10,000 gallons and go for much longer periods of time. But right now, and for about the past 20 years, I've done okay on this size of what I've got. I've taken that water down to the last few inches in the tank and was sweating the load thinking, geez, I have to break down and have one of those water trucks come out here and bring me uh, 2,000 gallons of water for about 500 bucks. Oh, yeah, that's a cringe factor there. And knock on wood, I've never had to do that. But you know, dry, dry, dry right now. I watch a lot of new people move out into this area over the years and, and see how they are doing it. And a lot of people come out from different parts of the world and they've never lived off grid. Um, you know, you don't want to have to be running into town on a regular basis from here. The wear and tear on your vehicle alone would make it not worth it. So, um, yeah, you want to keep your your road tripping down to a minimum. You will get enough water here in general, and you will get enough power in general. And the only thing you need to do for either of those systems is adjust as the times change. But I know of people that run out every single day, every single day to fill five gallons worth of drinking water. That, that makes living out here much harder, much harder than it needs to be. So yeah, you can see the sun right there <laughs> beaming down. All my batteries are full, 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 power to spare, power to spare. Water tank near full. Just got a few inches I could put in one. So... All of those things considered, it gives me comfort out here. I don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, tomorrow I might have to jump and run for something like food or water. Now, try and be a little bit more prepared than that. Oh, it's warm. Whew. Anyway, just checking back in with you guys. Another blah, blah, blah about living off grid in Hawaii and I'm gonna check everything before I try and post this video because yeah I need I need a break on those technical issues and uh, hope you're all doing good where you are always look forward to hearing what's happening in your neck of the woods I am paying attention to a lot of you guys where you live as you tell me what's going on as I run from shady spot to shady spot here and you know why <laughs> yeah all right, just a little walkabout today, guys. Get this up there and make sure it's all working good, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Aloha, everybody. Yeah, definitely about 83 now. Getting toasty. Oh, shade. <laughs>